morning, good morning. It is your boy Jay Goble back at it again for Not Many Noble, reading the Bible through in 22 with you. It is June 24th, the 175th day that we have been, been reading the Bible together. We're in the book of Isaiah, or Isaiah. We're in the book of Isaiah, and uh, we're reading about the judgment to come on the land of Israel for their rebellion against God, sinfulness, and that's we've been reading the Bible in chronological order, started in Genesis, and now we're in Isaiah, but we're kind of in Second Kings, Second Chronicles for the most part, but Isaiah is taking place. What Isaiah wrote is taking place, and so that's why we're reading it now, because we're reading it in chronological order. So let's jump right in. We're going to end with 11, 16. So eight once. So we're going to read 8, 9, 10, and 11, I think. Yahweh said to me, Isaiah 8, verse 1, Take a large tablet and write on it with a man's pen, for Maher Shalal Hashbaz, and I will take for myself faithful witnesses to testify, Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jeberachiah. I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. Then Yahweh said to me, Call his name Maher Shalal Hashbaz. For before the child knows how to say, My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the plunder of Samaria, will be carried away by the king of Assyria. Yahweh spoke to me yet again, saying, Because this people has refused the waters of Shiloah that go softly and rejoice in resin and Ramalia's son. Now therefore, behold, the Lord brings upon them the mighty flood waters of the river, the king of Assyria in all his glory. It will come up over all its channels and go over all its banks. It will sweep onward into Judah. It will overflow and pass through. It will reach even to the neck. The stretching out of its wings will fill the width of your land, Emmanuel. Make an uproar, you peoples, and be broken in pieces. Listen, all you from far countries, dress for battle and be shattered. Dress for battle and be shattered. Take counsel together, and it will be brought to nothing. Speak the word, and it will not stand, for God is with us. For Yahweh spoke this to me with a strong hand and instructed me not to walk in the way of this people, saying, Don't say a conspiracy concerning all about which this people say a conspiracy. Neither fear their threats nor be terrorized. Yahweh of armies is who you must respect as holy. He is the one you must fear. He is the one you must dread. He will be a sanctuary, but for both houses of Israel, he will be a stumbling stone and a rock that makes them fall. For the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. Many will stumble over it, fall, be broken, be snared, and be captured. Wrap up the covenant, seal the law among my disciples. I will wait for Yahweh who hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom Yahweh has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from Yahweh of armies who dwells in Mount Zion. When they tell you, consult with those who have familiar spirits and with the wizards who chirp and who mutter, shouldn't a people consult with their God? Should they consult the dead on behalf of the living? Turn to the law and to the covenant. If they don't speak according to this word, surely there is no mourning for them. They will pass through it very distressed and hungry. It will happen that when they are hungry, they will worry and curse by their king and by their God. They will turn their faces upward and look to the earth and see distress, darkness, and the gloom of anguish. They will be driven into thick darkness. Chapter 9. But there shall be no more gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he has made it glorious by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light has shined on those who lived in the land of the shadow of death. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased their joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy and harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the plunder. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as in the day of Midian. For all the armor of the armed man and the noisy battle and the garments rolled in blood will be for burning, fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful, or Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. On David's throne and on his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from that time on 
even forever. The zeal of Yahweh of armies will perform this. Interesting that, you know, the, the brought into contempt, the land of Zebulun and the na- land of Naphtali. That's the ones, remember where uh, Assyria just took them captive. And he's talking about the Messiah to come, you know, the, the son, Emmanuel, who is to come uh, and, and redeem and redeem the people. The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it falls on Israel. All the people will know, including Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, who say in pride and in arrogance of heart, the bricks have fallen, but we will build with cut stone. The sycamore fig trees have been cut down, but we will put cedars in their place. Therefore Yahweh will set up on high against him the adversaries of Rezin, and will stir up his enemies, the Syrians in front and the Philistines behind, and they will devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Yet the people have not turned to him who struck them, neither have they sought Yahweh of armies. Therefore Yahweh will cut off from Israel head and tail, palm branch and reed in one day. The elder and the honorable man is the head, and the prophet who teaches lies is the tail. For those who lead this people lead them astray, and those who are led by them are destroyed. Therefore the Lord will not rejoice over their young men, neither will he have compassion on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is profane and an evildoer, and every mouth speaks evil. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burns like a fire, it devours the briars and thorns. Yes, it kindles in the thickets of the forest, and they roll upward in a column of smoke. Through Yahweh of armies' wrath, the land is burned up, and the people are the fuel for the fire. No one spares his brother. One will devour on the right hand and be hungry, and he will eat on the left hand, and they will not be satisfied. Everyone will eat the flesh of his own arm, Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim. Manasseh, and they they together shall be against Judah. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. So, once they receive judgment and kind of justice for their sins, they still won't turn. It's still not turning. Woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees and to the writers who write oppressive decrees to deprive the needy of justice and to rob the poor among my people of their rights, that widows may be their plunder and that they may make the fatherless their prey. Chapter 10 here. What will you do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which will come from afar? To whom will you flee for help? Where will you leave your wealth? They will only bow down under the prisoners and will fall under the slain. For all his th- uh, for all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Alas, Assyrian, the rod of my anger, the staff in whose hand is my indignation. I will send him against a profane nation and again against the people who anger me. I will give him a command to take the plunder and to take the prey and to take them down like the mire of the streets. However, he doesn't mean so, neither does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off not a few nations. For he says, aren't all of my princes kings? Isn't Kalno like Carchemish? Isn't Hamath like Arpad? Isn't Samaria like Damascus? As my hand has found the kingdoms of the idols whose engraved images exceeded those of Jerusalem and Samaria, shall I not, as I have done to Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? He's like, I'm going to treat them. Who's Israel to me? I'm going to take care of this like I took care of everything else. I'm going to handle my business. Therefore, it will happen that when the Lord has performed his whole work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the willful proud of the king of Assyria and the insolence of his arrogant looks. For he has said, by the strength of my hand, I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I have understanding. I have removed the boundaries of the peoples and have robbed their treasures. Like a valiant man, I have brought down their rulers. My hand has found the riches of the people like a nest, and like one gathers eggs that are abandoned, I have gathered all the earth." There was no one who moved their wing or that opened their mouth or chirped. Should an axe brag against him who chops with it? Should a saw exalt itself above him who saws with it? As if a rod should lift those who lift it up, or as if a a staff should lift up someone who is not wood. Therefore the Lord, Yahweh of armies, will send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory a burning will be kindled like the burning of fire." The light of Israel will be for a fire and his holy one for a flame, and it will burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. He will consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body. It will be as when a standard bearer faints. The remnant of the trees of his forest shall be few, so that a child could write their number. 
It will come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and those who have escaped from the house of Jacob will no more again lean on him who struck them, but shall lean on Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel. In truth, a remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. For though your people, Israel, are like the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. A destruction is determined, overflowing with righteousness. For the Lord, Yahweh of armies, will make a full end, and that determined, throughout all the earth. Therefore the Lord, Yahweh of armies, says, My people who dwell in Zion, don't be afraid of the Assyrian, though he strike you with the rod and lift up his staff against you as Egypt did. For yet a very little while, and the indignation against you will be accomplished, and my anger will be directed to his destruction. Yahweh of armies will stir up a scourge against him, as in the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. His rod will be over the sea, and it will lift up like he did against Egypt." It will happen in that day that his burden will depart from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing oil. He has come to Aiath. He has passed through Migron. At Michmash he stores his baggage. They have gone over the pass. They have taken up their lodging at Seba, or Geba. Ramah trembles. Gibeah of Saul has fled. Cry aloud with your voice, daughter of Galim. Listen, Lesha, you poor Anathoth. Madmena is a fugitive. The inhabitants of Gebim flee for safety. This very day he will halt at Nob. He shakes his hand at the mountain of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord, Yahweh of armies, will lop the boughs with terror. The tall will be cut down and the lofty will be brought low. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, and Lebanon will fall by the mighty one. Chapter 11 a shoot will come out of the stalk of Jesse, and a branch out of his roots will bear fruit. Yahweh's spirit will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahweh. His delight will be in the fear of Yahweh. He will not judge by the sight of his eyes, neither decide by the hearing of his ears, but he will judge the poor with righteousness and decide with equity for the humble of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will kill the wicked. Righteousness will be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf, the young lion, and the fattened calf together, and a little child will lead them. The cow and the bear will graze, their young ones will lie down together, the lion will eat straw like the ox, the nursing child will play near a cobra's hole, and the wean child will put his hand on the viper's den. They will not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. It will happen in that day that the nations will seek the root of Jesse, who stands as a banner of the peoples, and his resting place will be glorious. It will happen in that day that the Lord will set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant that is left of his people from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. He will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim will depart and those who persecute Judah will be cut off. Ephraim won't envy Judah and Judah won't persecute Ephraim. They will fly down on the shoulders of the Philistines on the west. Together they will plunder the children of the east. They will extend their power over Edom and Moab and the children of Ammon will obey them. Yahweh will utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his scorching wind he will wave his hand over the river, and will split it into seven streams, and cause men to march over in sandals. There will be a highway for the remnant that is left of his people from Assyria, and there, like there was for Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. It is interesting to me. Um, it's just this, his voice, right? He's, he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will kill the wicked. That's all. He, he just has to speak. God just has to speak. He spoke the universe into existence. And he, and this is, uh, there's a part, I think the natural then question is like, Lord, why don't you speak? Please, please speak. But he's promised. He has promised to bring justice. So there, nobody's going to escape. Nobody's going to uh, go unpunished. Uh, those who trust in the Lord Jesus Christ will have their sins punished. They have their sins punished on his body. No, one, but no, <laughs> no oppressor 
is going to escape his wrath. None, uh, no liar, right? We've, we, we've learned and we've heard the sexually immoral as well. There's no room in the kingdom for them. They will not escape. They will not escape. No one will. The sin will be punished upon Christ's body or uh, upon us. And man, it don't sound, that's, that's not what we want. So, so let's pray. All right, we're praying for John and Kathy Haley, their church family in Granalier, Spain, as they, like an increasing number of churches in Europe, are invested in receiving and caring for the needs of Ukrainian refugees. Provisions to meet these physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. Their translation projects and that they will catch any detail they might have overlooked for an excellent end product. John, as he teaches New Testament Greek at the seminary in Barcelona in the fall. So that's that's who we are praying for. There, what was it? There, oh, World Venture. World Venture is the name of the organization that they are with. And that's who we are praying for. So let us let's let's pray for the for this to happen. Let's pray for the day when the young ones will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. That great and terrible coming of the Lord. Um, let's pray for that. And let's pray for the work that is going on there in Spain. Father, thank you so much for your kindness and mercies to us. Thank you for sending your word. Thank you for drawing near to us. Thank you for the promises of God that we read. We know that they are new and wonderful and everlasting, and we confess we have been guilty. We have been the guilty ones. We have been those who have sought out many schemes. We have been those who have indulged in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and we have sought out our own things, our own way of handling things. And I haven't really been interested in waiting on you and waiting on your perfect judgment. I'd rather take things into my own hands. Thank you very much. Forgive us. Draw us unto yourself. Teach us. Show us. Give us wisdom. Thank you for your word. Bring that about. Bring about the promises, the promises that we haven't seen yet. Please, we know that you judge righteously. You don't judge by the sight of the eyes. You don't decide by the hearing of the ears. You will judge the poor with righteousness and decide with equity for the humble of the earth, striking the earth with the rod of your mouth and the breath of your lips, destroying the wicked, killing the wicked. We pray for your mercy. We pray, hold back. Draw more sinners unto yourself. More sinners would be saved. Even in Barcelona, Spain, here as we think of John and Kathy Haley. And pray for zeal. Pray for energy. Pray for resources. Pray for the ability to continue to invest and receive and care for the needs of Ukrainian refugees. Provisions to meet their physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. It takes money. It takes places. It takes uh, and energy. And you know, we we're finite. We run out of it. We run out of it. So we pray for mercy on John and Kathy, that you would continue to strengthen them in their home church in these efforts, Lord. Then that their translation projects would come about, and that they would be able to find find time during the day for deep work, and that you would bless their labors. And that it would be a tremendous blessing to, um, to those, uh, to the Spanish speaking world or wherever, wherever they're making that translation for, or whatever they're, they're writing for, that it would be a blessing to those who read it. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your promises and pray that you would please bring them to pass and that you would bring them to pass in a way that you receive the most glory and the most honor for you are most glorious and uh, worthy of honor and praise, which we freely give to you um, as your rightful due. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right, y'all. Uh, show notes, notmanynoble.com. If you want to get a hold of me, that is notmanynoble at gmail.com. You can send me an email. Thank you so much for listening, and I will catch y'all tomorrow.